Razorback fans, it's Bama week, and we know how long it's been since the Razorbacks have beaten Alabama. Can they do it this weekend? I believe they can, and I believe I know how. Let's talk about it on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 The Buzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday. We're at the midway point of the week, getting you ready for Arkansas and Alabama this Saturday in Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium. It's going to be a great one. Uh, I know that the excitement surrounding this game has been circled for really – last year i mean everybody kind of knew that this was going to be a big game no matter what but it has so many implications not only in the college football landscape but in the sec west race and everything so it's an exciting time it's exciting to to be able to have a game like this that we can have fun with and talk about and actually mean something which it absolutely does and the question always becomes especially in this like i, I do this in football sometimes because i feel like in a lot of cases when you're going up against an opponent that weekend or that Saturday, at least right now with Arkansas, they're going to be a team that can win. It's not usual that you go up against a mighty Goliath that can just beat you and you're going to need all the things to go your way in order for you to even stand a chance. You don't have that happen very often. You had it happen last year against Georgia. You had it happen last year against Bama. Uh, you could even say it happened in other cases over the previous few years. But this might be the only time that I ever actually look at this game as being a David versus Goliath type of game this season for the Razorbacks. Even though Alabama's beatable, they're not invincible. They're not uh, the Alabama team of just two years ago or four years ago or six years ago or 10 years ago or, you know, just every year that they've won a national championship. You know, they're not that team. They're not just that dominating force. They have flaws. And I believe that this might be the best chance Arkansas has had to beat Alabama probably since 2014. And, and, and even then in that year in 2014, Arkansas was not a good team. or Arkansas was a better team than what they showed as far as a record win. And Alabama was not as a good of a team as what you had seen previously. So you could even say 2010 in, in that case. But still, this is just, this is a year and this is a team. This is a game to where Arkansas has at least a puncher's chance, a legitimate puncher's chance of winning this game. And I here's how I believe Arkansas can win this game. I'm just going to give you three reasons, and it's pretty obvious. I feel like there's not really anything surprising that I'm going to dive into as far as how they do it. But I think there are some at least some fun themes and fun specifics that we can dive into as to seeing as to uh, why they'll be able to beat Alabama this weekend. And the first one, is K.J. Jefferson. K.J. has to be the best K.J. And when I say best K.J., I'm talking about the K.J. that we see, that we know, that we love. That fourth quarter K.J., where any time that the, the points need to get on the board or you need a drive, you, you need something, K.J. always answers the call. And I believe that that's a great quality to have. But against Alabama, you can't just wait until the fourth quarter in order to get it going. You have to be able to bring it each and every play, each and every possession, each and every quarter. You just got to bring it. And we know that Alabama is a team that offensively has the Heisman Trophy winner. But on defense, they have a guy who I think is deserving of the Heisman Trophy and Will Anderson. He's going to be coming after KJ. This Alabama defense is going to be coming after KJ. They're going to try to hit KJ. They're going to try to make him a little bit weaker as the game goes on. You know, they're really going to get after him because they know the type of high quality player that he is. So, in order for KJ to really play his best game, he's going to have to play mistake free. He's going to have to not have the bad fumbles like he's had the past couple of games. He's not going to have, he can't throw any interceptions. And he's got to make some really good decisions when it comes to, how he approaches, when to run, when to pass, when to go down, when to go out of bounds, whatever it is, he's going to have to have some really good decisions whenever the game's going on and in certain plays. 
Now, you want them to be this way every game. So, again, it's not like I'm really just you know, blowing people's minds with how I want KJ to play. I think we all would like KJ to play his best game, just like KJ would like to play his best game each and every game. But you've seen it before where KJ has been able to not have his best game or to be able to make mistakes and still win. You can't do that against Alabama. You can't you can't go out there and give them the ball. You can't go out there and have three and outs and, and, and go you know just give the ball back to them uh, at a, at a at a large amount. You just can't do those things. And also, when I say KJ, I kind of include just the offense in general into him. You know, I'm talking about not only KJ. I'm talking about Kendall Bryles. I'm talking about Rocket Sanders. I'm talking about the offensive line. I'm talking about everybody. KJ is just the focal point because he is QB one after all. And so. When I say KJ, I mean the whole offense. And that's kind of the same thing with Kendall Bryles when it comes to the way he's going to call the game. I know that he's got, like Kendall's coming under a lot of heat, or at least some uh, some people have very, been very critical of his play calling in certain regards in the game. And I still hold the idea that Kendall Bryles isn't a fantastic offensive coordinator and he's the best offensive coordinator Arkansas could have right now. Now, that doesn't mean everything's perfect at all. Like, you know, I think, you know, Nick Saban even is imperfect. Like, he's great, but there's be times he'll make mistakes. Like, everybody makes mistakes. But when it comes to the offense, I want to see Kendall Bryles put KJ in good positions. As in, I don't want to see you doing wide receiver passes. It hasn't ever, it's never worked. It literally has never worked. Last year didn't work. This year didn't work. Don't do those things. If you're having success running the ball, keep running the ball. Don't stop. Do not stop until they stop you. If you are got if you got all those running backs in that offensive line and you're reeling off five to seven yards a pop, keep that, keep that up. Keep doing that. Because that's the thing that's going to make this game go by faster, that's going to keep your defense off the field, and it's going to wear down Alabama mentally. Get after it and just run the ball effectively. But let KJ make those decisions. Don't. Don't throw it out to, you know, some other guy out there to try to throw the ball or whatever. Make that happen. Let your running backs do the, do the work. When it comes to passing, open it up a little bit. Do it in obvious passing downs. You got some really good wide receivers. Get them the ball in space. Let them do their work. And I've also got a lot of people, and, and this is a, a sidebar, I've got a lot of people that always keep bringing up Malik Hornsby. And you get them on, the, okay, folks, I, I get it. Like, I would love to see Malik Hornsby on there too, but you like, <laughs> You're not you're not going to see him as like you got really good wide receivers. Malik Hornsby is still your backup quarterback. You know they're not going to try to put him in positions to where he can get hurt because then if KJ gets hurt, you're really screwed. So you you can you can win without Malik Hornsby. Like Malik Hornsby is a fine player and he's got a lot of speed, but people wanting him to be on the field like and getting 15, 20 touches a game is absurd. So just the offense needs to be able to flow. Be Utilize your strengths. KJ is a strength. Your running game's a strength. Your offensive line's a strength. Like utilize those strengths. Be smart. Take risk in the right moments. And to be able to be methodical and not turn the ball over, not have dumb penalties. Don't beat yourself, especially on offense, because the more opportunities you give the Heisman Trophy winner, uh, Bryce Young, uh, to go downfield and to score touchdowns against you the worse off you're going to be, which is actually <laughs> going to be our second uh, reason as to why Arkansas, or how I should say, Arkansas beats Alabama, which we'll talk about here in just one second. But first, BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest of player developments, team matchup, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf, head over to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more at BetOnline, where the game starts. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with our uh, second way of Arkansas beating Alabama. You know, we talked about the offensive side of the ball. And, of course, we need to talk about the defensive side of the ball. Now, that we know about the secondary and the issues that they have. And we know about 
the fact that Miles Slutcher is back, and that's been a huge factor and a huge, uh, uh, great like ad, or at least uh, somebody that's been able to help him out tremendously so far in just the games he, he's been in. So getting him back's been crucial. But you're going up against the Heisman Trophy winner. You're going up against Alabama. They got four and five star talent across the board. Each one of those offensive linemen that are starting are probably going to be in the NFL. So wide receivers are going to be in the NFL. The quarterback's going to be in the NFL. Like they got an NFL roster. And you're going to be going, and they're going to be going up against a defense with Arkansas that has maybe a couple, but maybe a few, maybe not many, but still some good players. So you're going to have to be able to cause problems for Bryce Young because I know that they have a good rushing attack at, at Alabama. They, they're good at everything. Let's just be honest. Like, it's not like they're bad. Like, they're good at everything. If you stop one thing, they'll just do something else. But your best chance of being able to win this game and slow down Bryce Young uh, or slow down the Alabama offense is slowing down Bryce Young. Getting a lot of pressure on him, I think, is extremely important which I know is easier said than done. But Arkansas has done, honestly, a pretty good job of slowing down uh, quarterbacks and getting after them, uh, especially in key situations. And I think back to, like, the, the biggest game that Alabama had, of course, was against Texas. And Texas, you know, gave them all that they wanted. But the one thing that Texas did a really good job at, at least in holding Alabama uh, to, uh, to not many points, because they only scored 20. I know the penalties played a huge factor into it. But a lot of it was just slowing down Bryce Young. Because think about this. Bryce Young threw the ball in that Texas game 39 times. He completed 27 attempts. So you're talking about a really good percentage. But he only threw for 213 yards. You would think that if you completed 27 passes, you'd have a much larger amount of yardage. And he only had one touchdown in this game, too. So... You know, if, if you want to kind of look at it from another perspective, I know Hudson Card and Quinn Ewers both played in this game. Quinn Ewers went out with an injury, but they completed 23, per, 23 passes for 292 yards. So you're talking they completed four less passes, but had nearly 80 more yards. That's what I mean by slowing down Bryce Young. It's not necessarily just getting to him and sacking him, which would be great. I think everybody would be all in favor about it but just not allowing big plays to kill you. Like that's what happened against AM. Big plays hurt you. Not only the fumble recovery, which I know was not uh, offense, but you had big runs by Duquesne, just, you know, really set, setting them up in, into, into good plays. Like you can't let that happen because that's going to take you out of the game quickly. It's going to take the crowd out of the game quickly. And it's going to give them all the momentum to where, hey, if they know that they can burn you on every single play, you know, or just throw it downfield and cause you all these problems, like, they're just going to keep doing it. Like, they're not going – like, Alabama is a team, and Nick Saban is a coach, that they'll just keep hammering that nail. You know, they don't get too cute. <laughs> you know, they, they don't want like, well, even though we're at we're running the ball really well, let's let's throw in some crazy passes here. Like, they're extremely gifted at knowing what they're good at, using that strength, and not stop using it until the game is over and you are defeated. Like they are going to do that. So you cannot allow, especially in the beginning part of the game, for Bryce Young to stand back there, survey the field, have plenty of time, go through his reads, look at his options, say, hmm, 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 hmm. all right, there we go. Uh, that guy was wide open over there because I sat back there for five seconds and I had plenty of time. The secondary for Arkansas is a struggle. We know that. You're not saying anything that people don't already know. So how do you make up for it? How do you help them out? How do you help them out? Getting pressure on the quarterback. That's how you help them out. They're not going to be good enough to sit back there in the secondary and just hold their positions and hold their man for – five to 10 seconds while Bryce Young just stands there. Like they're not good enough. Nobody's really good enough for that. So you're going to have to really make Bryce Young feel that pressure from the get go. You're going to have to not only uh, be able to push in that offensive line, send Drew Sanders on the outside too, to get after him that way, confuse him with some of the, some of the coordination you're going to have send a corner, a cornerback blitz on occasion too. like just, 
really make him uncomfortable and make him always have to look onto the other sides to see if somebody's coming around. Because I'll say this about Alabama. I know how great they are. And I just mentioned how they have NFL players across the board. Well, their offensive line, though, is a little bit of a struggle this year. Like They have not done a great job, at least and comparatively speaking, to uh, other offensive lines that they've had in previous years. they still got some really good players on there. But it, it seemed that that might be one of the, quote, weaknesses of this team that Arkansas needs to exploit. They need to get after him. They need to cause some problems. And if you allow Bryce Young to do Bryce Young things, not only are you going to lose this game, but you could be in danger of being like a 52 to 21 type game because they're that good. They're that good when they get going. But the positive thing is that Alabama, as great as they are, last year and this year, the past five true road games, four of them have been decided by three or less points. So being playing on the road is always a is always a big factor for them. And Arkansas has got a great home field advantage. Like there's going to be a ton of people there. And it's going to be loud. It's going to be rowdy. It's going to be a beautiful day. And people are going to be all about it. And that's going to hopefully cause Alabama some problems, which will be our third and final point here in just a second. But first, these days, a potential new hire can feel like high stakes wagering on your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. What you do is you just go on their website and check it out at linkedin.com and put in a slash locked on college. You can start not only looking for jobs, but also posting your jobs as well. You add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. And you have simple tools like screening questions, making it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and who you like to hire. That's why the small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast about how Arkansas can beat Alabama. Um, you got to hope Bama beats Bama. It's as simple as that. It's probably pretty, pretty cliche when you when you think about it. It's like, yeah, well, you got to, you know, a team's got to beat themselves. Similar to what Arkansas did against AM last week. Arkansas beat themselves in that one. And so it's kind of got to be the same thing. Look at Alabama in under Nick Saban and some of the years and games that they've lost. They always had a common theme. Very seldom did Alabama just get straight up beat outright. Like it's happened, but very seldom did they just get beat because the other team was superior, the other team was better coached, the better team was better prepared. Like very seldom has that happened. More often than not, and especially losing the teams like Arkansas, things that needed to happen are pretty consistent, like kickoff return for a touchdown like they saw against Texas A&M last year. Those types of plays. Ole Miss a few years ago where uh, the ball bounced off a defender and caught, and the guy for Ole Miss caught it and ran it all the way to the end zone. Fluky plays like that. That changes everything in the dynamic of a game. Penalties. Penalties that Alabama starts committing that are extremely uncharacteristic. I still can't believe Texas did not beat Alabama because they should have. Because Alabama committed like 18 million penalties. But those penalties is what kept Texas even in the game. So if, Al if Alabama has a game like that where they're committing a lot of bad, dumb penalties, it keeps you alive. It keeps you in it. Turnovers. Now, this is true for everybody, of course. And Alabama is a very fundamentally sound team. Can you get them to cause some turnovers? Can you get Bryce Young to throw a pick or two? Ooh, who would have guessed that one? Could you get a fumble maybe? Did you get a muff punt? You know, something like that that causes a turnover, that causes you to be able to gain not only momentum, but be in good field position, try to make some plays, 
can you get that from Alabama? Now, a lot of cases, that's out of your, like, it's out of your hands. Like, if you make a good play on the ball, that's that's great by you. Or if you make a great strip on the ball, that's great by you. But sometimes the penalties have nothing to do with you. Sometimes the, the you know, the muff punts, the uh, things like that may not have anything to do with you. But sometimes it happens because football is football after all. And plays like that are pretty consistent when they happen. So can Alabama beat themselves? And I want to say this with the utmost respect, as you all know that I have for Arkansas and for the football program and everything. But here's the thing. You don't just simply beat Alabama. You got to play your A game. You got to bring it each and every play. Play as nearly as flawless as you possibly can. And even when you do that, that may not be enough. So what you got to hope for and what you got to plan for is not only you playing your A game and bringing it every play, but also Alabama not bringing their A game, making mistakes, fumbling the ball, throwing interceptions, bad penalties, third and longs, things like that. That's how you beat Alabama. That's the recipe for success for Arkansas this weekend. You have to play your best game you've ever played under Sam Pittman. And you got to hope that Alabama struggles in certain areas of their game while the atmosphere there in Fayetteville and the crowd keeps the Razorbacks going, keeps that momentum, keeps being right on top of Alabama, making them earn each and every play. You want to beat Alabama? That's how you beat Alabama. It's easier said than done, as we all know. Arkansas, you've lost 15 straight to Alabama. George Bush was the president last time you beat Alabama. He was in the midway of his second term. I was a senior in high school. God, that really makes me feel old. But still, the point is, is it's been a long time. This is a great opportunity for you. You know what you need to do. You know what you have to do. But can you do it? It's possible. It's possible. But you're going to have to really bring it in every aspect of the game this weekend against Bama. Appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.